Hello, I must drop the guitar. So I uh, I just did uh, videos for the Ampero, pretty good for the price. Um, I did video for the Quad Cortex and uh, said that back in the day I recorded a whole bunch of albums with the Pod 2. And if you know what you're doing and the notes are there, nobody cares. The sounds were not good, or were they? I know how to write a song and stuff, so people really didn't care about the sounds. And then people commented, well, run the old part two from 2000 through modern IRs, and I bet it's going to be night and day. So I found the rack. I have three of these. I have two part twos and one part XT, part pro XT. And so I found the rack, got one out. It is 120 volts. If you look in the back right there. Right, right about there. So I need a big ass brick that converts 220 into 120. That comes with its own problems. This thing has been in massive heavy use. As you can see on the coffee stains, right on the front panel, right there, Leslie wanted to wipe them off and said that's really embarrassing, but this is how it was in my rack back in Los Angeles when I used this. We'll keep it. So. I'm running this XLR out into the Morley Hum Eliminator and then into the uh, X4 by Universal Audio audio interface just to make sure that, you know, the hum that I had isn't that bad, that rhymes, and also a hum no, because that kills ground hum, which we had, so that's over here. So both Morley products definitely help. We're going to go through some part sounds the way they used to be 24 years ago. And then we're going to run it into the Engel cap loader right here on the table. And I loaded four IRs in there from Forward Audio that I just used in my guitar recording video. And I know they're good. That's it. Happy belated Easter. Belated? Belated? Happy late? Happy? Whatever. Now, we're going to go line six clean. And see what happens. I'm gonna go to manual. Here we go. Line six clean. Little bit of reverb. There's a gate. Of course, this is a valiant soothsayer with a wanginick uh, with maple strips and a maple fretboard. It's a brilliant guitar that they built for me in this color, and you can buy it exactly in this color from Valiant in Ukraine. It's not the most amazing sound. It's not warm. It's not two B. It's not super diamond dynamic and all that. Uh, it's not a quad cortex, but. 24 years old, you know what? I am going to say it probably kills a couple of modern modelers. I, I think it does. It's not as bad as we remember, is it? Now, I need to fight that noise with my own gate here. Okay, there we go. In the day I would have left that and thought that's the sound. I had no idea. Now I know a little bit how to tweak it. Well there's there really is no tweaking. Thank you. 
feel, I mean, I may, I might be completely off my rocker right here. I feel that the Pod Pro from 2000 can, to a degree, keep up with modern. And what, why am I, what am I saying? What the? I mean, I, I play these things all, all day long, right? I've got these modelers here. I've got these things here. I, sh my feeling should be valid, at least to me. And I feel that that's not so shit as we remember. As if there's a towel over the speaker. There's some live missing. Cause let's go to Bridge Classic. Yeah, there's Mulm, as we say in German. There's just some mud, some clarity missing. Oh god, okay, that's bad. Let's go to Rectified. That's the one that many people use. But they probably used it like this. That's a lot better already. And what I used a lot was the modern high gain for leads. Some delay, some reverb. Sepana, which has a cool lick, I've been working on it now, forgot about it. That's it, it's a cool lick, check it out on the channel, Kostin Stepanovic. I'm playing it badly now, but yeah, that's a cool sound, I think. <laughs> I mean, Ian Crichton from Saga played that sound. Um, Mike Keneally played that sound. Uh, they all played on my albums and they played through that. But what can we do? Where can we go? Let's go to Rectified again. Take the effects off. <laughs> Gonna go into the angular cap loader and we're gonna turn the speaker simulation off in the back by going to live mode. <laughs> So, now here's a modern IR from Forward Audio. I think this is the sweet child of something. Uh, we're going to go through four different ones that are loaded uh, in mono, because that's what the angle cap loader does. And um, now you tell me if it's better or not. <laughs>
I've heard much shittier sounds in modern modelers, much shittier sounds, not because technologically they can't do it, but because the people doing it, and which is really always the biggest thing, don't know where they want to go. If you don't know what you want frequency response wise, if you don't know what a good sound is, what are you programming? What are you putting in there? I think if you know where you want to go, part two and an IR loader can get you pretty kick-ass sounds for a production, just as any of the modern modelers can, but you have to know where you're going. So I think a lot of the people just don't know what a good sound is. At the moment, what do I know? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think those IRs from Forward Audio are good. They're not sponsoring this video, by the way, but I worked with them uh, yesterday and I, you know, knew where to find them. They're good. I know that I like them. So I put them in the Engel cap loader. Thank you, Engel. Also not sponsoring the video. Line 6, also not sponsoring the... Nobody's sponsoring this video. Not even the nice people from Valiant. But you could argue, of course, because I got the guitar as trade for my work, that it is sponsored. So you figure this out. I think that the part two sucks, but also doesn't. I think, the, I mean, that, that insane sound, really not good. Some of the models sound great as are. They sound great as they are. Some of the models uh, sound horrible as they are, but then with a modern IR on it, you can definitely get some top end out of it. You can make them sound more realistic or just better. It doesn't have to be realistic, just better. And I'm going to argue in context, if I now worked with this and recorded a song, depending on the style, I could absolutely make the sound totally fine. In a way where a modern modeler wouldn't actually give me more wouldn't sound more realistic or wouldn't sound better. And I'm really impressed that 24 years later, Honestly, this still holds up. We all want to shit on it. I don't think it's fair. If you have one lying around, run it through an IR loader 
and just make music. Don't be hindered in your creativity just because you have a pod too. I never was. But the problem is, I didn't know what good sounds were. I just dialed in that rectifier thing and recorded with it, and that was a bad idea. I could have, back then, dialed in much better sounds, much better, had I known what I wanted. And today, of course, I I have a bit more experience, and I have reference amplifiers. I could dial in quite better sounds, ridiculously better sounds, with that gear. So I'm, I, I was expecting it to be complete shit and it's only half shit and the rest you could absolutely work with and then get some fresh IRs, forward audio, link below, not sponsored, maybe work with your old gear. I have played gear from today with modern processing and all that, that's absolutely not on that level. Because the people making it don't know where they want to go. Knowing where you want to go and what a good sound actually is, is not half the battle. It's 90% of the battle. Most gear can produce kick-ass sounds if you know what kick-ass sounds are. But we're so uh, going through the preset, that sounds good, but in reality, it probably doesn't. If it makes you happy, that's fine. But in a musical context, certain things work and certain things don't. And I have a hunch that a lot of people at a lot of companies, including the people making Helix presets, uh, at line six, don't quite know what a good sound actually is. And I know that's harsh. I didn't know. But now I do. I think. Maybe. What do I know? Links below. Animals at the end. <laughs>